Hello, everybody. I am very excited to tell you that Chessable has published my course today on fundamental calculation skills. So this video, we will talk about calculation, the importance of it in our chess game, and the reasons why I created this course on Chessable and what you will get in return if you get this course from Chessable. Now, calculation is arguably the most fundamental chess skill to have. And if you master and if you get better at calculating, then this will give you immense benefit. You will improve your chest strength tremendously from improving your calculation skills. That's clear. And with the right study techniques, it should not be a difficult thing to master. And this is the basic promise of this course. In this course, we will engage in hardcore calculation training while also doing it in a medium where you will be always supported. We will start from something simple, as simple as three-ply calculation, which is the shortest possible line to calculate in chess. And once you master that, you can go deeper and faster later in your chess life, right? So this is the basic premise and promise of this course, that this is for everybody. We are engaging in a real calculation training and we are simulating a real game environment. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's dive in and look at how the course is structured on Chessable platform. And I will walk you through it. Now, first things first. One big reason why I create this course, folks, is that I noticed one big problem in my students' games. When I was asking them to, for example, calculate a line, they, are, they were usually giving me the first move that comes to their mind without calculating any concrete line. That's a very common analytical error, actually, for lots of players, right? Chess is a very concrete game, but instead of do, calculating a particular line, people have a tendency just to play the move, right? That looks good at first sight. Visual thinking kicks in. It's maybe a habit from Puzzle Rush or other, other, other you know, tactical platforms out there. But real calculation training involves calculating a line. And what's the shortest line in chess? That's only three-ply deep, right? One move for yourself, one move for the opponent, and one move for yourself. Now, engaging in three-ply calculation has immense benefits. First reason is this. Long variation is wrong variation in chess, right? If you force yourself to calculate deep and long line, then there's a huge chance that you will go wrong at some point. So it's much more efficient to engage in short but accurate calculations. Second key of calculation, you must check for the opponent's move that offers the biggest resistance, right? Just like when you solve mate in two puzzles, you have to look for the move by the opponent that gives the most resistance. And that's the key that many players neglect because of the wishful thinking. Think about that. Most players just see a good looking move and they just want to execute it. They try to seek evidence from the world that confirm their hypothesis instead of seeking for counter evidence, just like a scientist, right? This course, we will be explicitly training and reminding ourselves to check for the strongest reply by the opponent against our move. Remember, only three ply, which means you need to look at the move, strongest move, logically, by the opponent against your move. You need to only look at one move because that's only three ply, right? Only one, one move by the opponent must be checked, but you must force yourself to actively check for that strongest reply. Another huge benefit of this course, it's a mix of tactical and positional puzzles. Just like in a real game, no one is telling you whether there's a tactical solution. You need to set your goal properly using your orientation and understanding. Some positions, you need to create a weakness. Some positions, you need to win material. Sometimes you need to go for an attack, just like in a real game, just like in real world calculation. So this way, we are fighting against isolation and fragmentation that you see in normal tactical books, right? Because if you go to a tactical puzzle, you know that there's a winning move for you, right? You know that that's a critical moment. You will win something or give mate. This is not really how real game looks like, right? When you're playing a real chess game, 
no one is telling you. We have no idea whether it's a critical moment or not, right? So that's also why I structured the course this way, to simulate a real game environment. Another benefit of this course is that the evaluation of the resulting position becomes easier and we will train the skill in a simpler context, right? Because you, after you calculate a line, you must evaluate that resulting position before you make your move. It's a vital skill. Without the proper evaluation, calculation is useless. Okay? So because it's only three ply deep calculation, evaluation becomes easier, right? So you will learn all the right techniques in a simpler setting. And that's the biggest promise of this course, folks. Trust me, I'll be showing you all the right techniques of calculation in a simple context. Once you learn all the right techniques, you can gain speed. You can go faster and deeper later on. Okay, this is also great for educational psychology perspective. We are starting, we are tackling a very complex task from something simple. We are having all the right processes there. We simulate how real game environment looks like, real virtuation looks like in the simplest possible form. Trust me, folks, I have a PhD in cognitive science and this is really great for learning and long-term retention and forming connections and deeper processing of information. So this is the basic architecture of this course on Chessable. There are actually nine main chapters all the way to defense, followed by four puzzle chapters, mixed puzzles that you will tackle after you study those main chapters. All of them involve only three-ply calculation puzzles. You are supposed to see an entire line before you make your first move, right? That's a huge precondition here, folks. You must calculate the entire line, which means you have to check for the best reply by the opponent. And if you pay attention to these first two puzzle chapters, final test chapters, they involve scaffolds, which means small hints and prompts to support casual players, beginner players, right? Because from educational psychology perspective, that's a great way to teach material, especially for beginners, right? Because if you give them two complex puzzles, then they get overwhelmed. Their working memory becomes overwhelmed and no learning happens. So we have to hold their hands until they gain independence. And those puzzle sections will do that exactly. It's just like, you know, you're using four wheeled bicycles when you're just learning how to ride a bike, right? Just like that. Those extra wheels offer scaffold that really help you to learn the skill. And of course, at some point, you'll remove those cycles and proceed with normal bicycle, right? It should be the same when you teach complex tasks in chess. We should really offer the scaffold to those beginners. So beginners, casual players, you're welcome to this course, right? I will hold your hands in this course. I will offer you great support from cognitive science perspective as well, right? To guide you throughout this course. And of course, final two chapters, as you can see here, they don't have scaffolds, but all puzzles chapters here have four different difficulty levels. And that's also great. This allows you to stay in the right difficulty for your level. It's called desirable difficulty. So the, the puzzle should not be too difficult or too easy. Improvement happens when we are just outside of our comfort zone. So this course makes sure that you just stay there. You will force yourself, you will force your brain, but you will not go too high or too easy. So you will find a way to stay in the right level of difficulty. And as you grow stronger later on, you can tackle more difficult problems. Okay, shall we go and look, for example, one of the positions from one of the chapters? For example, I can just look at this, uh, this chapter, winning material. Very typical way of, um, of winning games is just simply winning material, of course. So there must be a separate chapter about this. So let's look at this position. That's what you will see in those main chapters, right? For example, this position also involves a small prompt, by the way. This will help us to orient to the position, right? Here, white is a much more active rook compared to black. Is there a way to exploit this factor, right? It doesn't reveal the solution, of course, but just gives you a basic orientation, okay? So let's do it together, folks. Yeah, this rook is really terrible on a7, right? Does nothing. Actually, just a terrible piece. I mean, like, completely lacking mobility. Our rook is beautifully placed. We can attack stuff. So I'm starting to look at more forcing moves, obviously, right? 
but we have to calculate an entire line, which is only three ply deep. So I look at this forcing move, for example, right, hitting the bomb, which forces H5, and we should always start from the most forcing moves when you start calculating in chess. Very important thing. We should always start from the most forcing moves first, H5. Then can you see a nice follow-up to H5? Please stop the video and find the next move for white after H5. Congratulations, folks, because I think I'm seeing Rook G3 back. How about that? Rook H3, H5, Rook G3, right? So I'm calculating a line, which is only three ply deep, right? This is the first ply, this is the second ply, and this is the third ply. Rook G3 back. And as far as I can see, there is no way for black to guard the G6 pawn at that moment. You see? So I will actually execute it because there is no way for black to hold the pawn. And yes, that was correct. And that's exactly you will see on chessable. This was a correct solution. So then after, of course, you're, you're correct. You can read the entire annotations from me. I also give some sidelines, for example. Right, for example, if you start with Rook F3 first, also looks like a good move. But after King E7, right, there is no entry square for the Rook. And this doesn't really, you know, do you, you want anything in this position. But Rook H3 is very precise. Hitting on the weakness, forcing h5, and then rook g3, and black's position collapses because white will take on g6 with a much better rook, right? So it's a very simple three ply puzzle which involves winning material. Folks, I told you that this is a mix of tactical and positional puzzles, just like in a real game, right? That's actually one of the biggest strengths of this course that no one is telling you whether that's a tactical solution or a positional puzzle, just like in a real game, but to support casual players and beginners i had to include this positional teams and mini plans chapter this reads like an instructional i give all the most important strategic tools for you like a positional primer that then you'll be later tested in the final puzzle chapters and i structured this in a way to also you taking examples from educational psychology to make the learning much more efficient i'm going to show you exactly what i mean basically it means like this Everything starts with an instructional puzzle, which means you just read this as an instructional, and then you will be later tested with a puzzle that tests that skill in a different context. Remember my last video, it was about transfer, right? You will basically learn something and immediately you will have a chance to apply what you learned to a different context that shows deeper similarities, right? That's how you measure whether learning is taking place. So that's also how this chapter is structured. Take a look at this example, folks. For example, a positional team of creating a big square, right? Taking a step back. Positional team of creating a big square. Obviously, this reads like an instruction. So I'm expecting you to just read the lines, just like a real book, right? This, of course, you can also treat this like a puzzle, but especially for beginners, yeah, especially for casual players. I want you to just look at the solutions, but try to understand, internalize the steps and why those moves are played. For example, here, g4 is great because black is gaining the e4 square for the knight, right? That's a very short positional operation, only three ply deep, and black gains the e4 outpost, right? That's a very stock standard awakening pieces pattern that I'm actually giving you a chance to understand because that's a very universal pattern. Once you understand the mechanics of it, you can apply it, the same idea, in different situations. Right? That's why this is in this chapter, because that's a very important team to learn. Okay, So basically, that's it for this discussion. You gain e4, and of course, I give more moves. Right, The knight can go there, then can go to c4, for example, king f5, and black will go a5, create a second front, and invade on e4, and win this endgame. Easily winning position for black, but it's all because, right, all because of the first position that you should see the move g4. A very short mini plan. If white goes f4, it doesn't change anything because now we also achieve a beautiful knight versus terrible bishop scenario. Great advantage for black, right? Okay, so now we learn this. Take a step back because this position we follow immediately, you see, with a puzzle in a different context. Let's see what kind of a puzzle is this. Let's do it together, folks, right? Retty Rubinstein, 1920, a chess classic. Can you find the winning mini plan for black, right? So now, please apply what you just learned in a previous puzzle to this position, folks. Let's go. Well, we have a beautiful pawn on a3, which serves like a decoy for the white king. The white king is decoyed, right? Which means our king has a chance to win the game on the king's side. 
but how can we do it? Because right now there is no n three squares for our king, right? So the question is, how can you activate your king? How do you awaken your king so that your king becomes an active piece on the king's side? And once I put it this way, remember the last position, the art of awakening pieces, undermining operation, g5 is on the board, and after takes takes, the king is going to e5, and white has resigned in his position because it's going to be completely game over after king e5, right? Taking a step back, same idea, right? Totally the same idea. It's an undermining operation, very short position calculation. After g5, of course, if white goes f5, then you have king e5 anyways. And if he, if he does go e5, of course, you just take the pawn. After take, 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 the king is going to f4. That's also easy. Here, after f takes e5, if they take on g5, black goes e4. These pawns are easily stopped by our king. And our two pawns decide the game instantly. So in the actual game, after g5, actually, so red resigned after g5 because he sees everything that is coming, right? But again, the underlying idea is the same, right? You want to learn the deeper similarities, the deeper messages. And this course will also give you a great chance to transfer your newly acquired skills, folks. Folks, please go and check the course. It's an introductory offer, which means it's on sale for the next 10 days or so, right? And you can always get your money back within 30 days after purchase if you don't like the course. I doubt it, though. I think you will like it. And uh, I will be very active on Chessable. You can always ask me your questions. I will be very responsive to your comments. Yeah, please give me feedback and I improve the course accordingly. You can just even Google, you know, chessable slash fundamental calculation skills slash calculation skills. It will be very easy for you to also find the course on chessable platform. And again, I'm very curious about the results of this course. I put my heart and soul into it. I have my own students in mind, right? I want to give them valuable material. And I'm very curious about the results of this course. I'm super excited. And in maybe next two or three videos, I will talk more deeply in about calculation, about the right top processes, about what about the importance of calculation, about the techniques that I'm personally using that help me to get better at this fundamental skill. So more calculation to follow. And I will see you very, very soon, folks. Thank you.